we are going to uh, discuss about joiners in this topic of uh, physical diagnosis and uh, <clears throat> as you know what is joiners joiners can be defined as yellowish discoloration of the skin um, and the mucous membrane and the sclera and uh, what's the reason behind that the reason behind is simply there is hyperbilirubinemia or increased level of bilirubin in the serum um, now uh, the important thing it is of course like both a sign and a symptom because the patients can notice this thing the doctors can notice this thing but one very important thing even the patients can miss this thing or even the doctors can miss this thing is when you are not going to examine a joint patient in a sunlight because in the in the light or in the uh, light which is used indoors sometime we cannot catch the yellowish discoloration of the eyes or the skin so um, the normal levels of bilirubin of course we will discuss when we will discuss lab diagnosis but now um, one of the thing uh, most of the time that you know uh, the hyperbilirubinemia is there or the bilirubin levels in the blood maybe are high but maybe you're not going to see any clinical joiners, okay? Like, remember when I use a word clinical, means like when you are examining a patient and you can see that thing. So most of the time, you know, the visible or the clinically visible joiners occur when the levels are more than 50 micromole per liter in the blood, okay? So, so you can say the level of... Uh, uh, by like one more important thing that it's not like this that you know it is always visible when it is more than 50 micromole per liter it can be clinically visible even at the level of 36 or 37 38 39 any level like this okay but as like most of the time it is detectable in this one when the levels are more than this and in a good light the good light should be there and this is how it looks like so, you know see so you can see the yellowish discoloration the yellow stench on the skin you can see the yellow mucous membranes okay so uh, now again and this is so basic that you know I was like planning to uh, skip it out okay because uh, this is something they teach us in, in, in physiology in a very 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 great detail in one of one of the things you know which basically uh, in physiology lectures they they pay a lot of attention to so we know like the bilirubin is present in the body as an unconjugated as well as conjugated form which is also unconjugated is also called as indirect and conjugated is also called as direct okay and the, the total bilirubin is basically when we add both of them so unconjugated as we know it is insoluble in water and of course the, like this one is present in the in the blood bounded with albumin okay so when this one which is insoluble for many of you who did not study this thing in physiology uh, so it is insoluble it is bounded with albumin and as it is bounded with albumin so of course may like something which will make sense when I will say like it cannot be filtered by glomerulus and what is glomerulus glomerulus is like a part of a nephron okay so and the <laughs> conjugated one of course it is water soluble right it is water soluble so it can be passed in urine okay. so very simple words and very easy thing so in joined us due to 
unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, remember this thing, when the jointus is due to this thing, indirect or unconjugated one, the urine color will be normal. The urine color will be normal because this one cannot pass in the urine. Okay. And, uh, okay, if we are talking about basics, so let's talk about a little basics, okay. I'm going to take you not here, but to here. Uh, as we know that, you know, the RBCs, they are destroyed in reticular endothelial system. It is broken down into the hemoglobin is released. Hemoglobin is broken down into two parts, heme and globin. Globin is protein. It goes to the protein cycle. Heme is the one which is released, okay? And maybe like here, they have given a lot of details. By the way, I, I don't know how it's written here, but uh, the heme part is basically changed into bilirubin, which is the unconjugated one, this one. And this one is the albumin-bound uh, uh, globe, uh, bilirubin, which is taken to the liver. And in liver, the liver does the conjugation by the enzyme called as glucuronyl transferase. And what happens, it changes into conjugated bilirubin or direct bilirubin, right? So glucuronyl transferase basically conjugates the bilirubin. And when the bilirubin is conjugated, you know, it is going to release it by in the bile into the intestine. And this conjugated bilirubin is going to change into urobilinogen, okay? Uh, and much of that urobilinogen will be reabsorbed. 15 to 20% is reabsorbed and recirculated back like this. This circle is given like this. And the one which is reabsorbed, basically 10% of that, that will be excreted in the urine and the rest, 70 to 75% is changed into stercobilinogen and stercobilinogen is the one which is we are going to lose in the feces and that's why our feces colors are look like how they look like, right? So because this is the stercobilinogen or stercobilin which imparts the color to the stools okay so very important concept guys like you know uh, so now take this concept guys as I told you when the indirect bilirubin in the blood will be raised it is insoluble it is not going to appear in the urine what it means when the jointus is prehepatic three kind of jointus are there Prehepatic, if there is any abnormality over here. Hepatic, when there is any abnormality over here. And post-hepatic, when the abnormality after, is after, after the liver or after the uh, conjugation. Okay. Now, when the, there will be prehepatic joinders, we don't found the bilirubin in the urine because it is not water-soluble. So, the urine color will be normal. Now, remember one more thing. The bilirubin also gives color to the stools. It is also deposited into the skin. So whenever we take the history of jointus, we always look for the jointus or yellowish discoloration. We do ask about the color of the urine. We do ask about the color of the stool. To differentiate, to look for the different causes of jointus, right? Make sense? So, of course, like in the liver, the liver, the bilirubin is conjugated to form the conjugated bilirubin, like or the direct bilirubin, and that's why it is the one which gives the bile its green color. And whenever there is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, the the urine color is dark brown because the conjugated bilirubin is present in the urine. And in the colon, in the colon, 
Conjugated bilirubin is metabolized by bacterial flora to stercobilinogen or stercobilin, which is excreted in the stool, and that's why we our stool color is brown. Okay, and some of them I told you like around 50 to 20 percent is excreted in the urine in the form of urobilinogen, which is basically a colorless water soluble compound. Okay. So remember, whenever there is prehepatic, whenever there is prehepatic joiners, what are the causes of prehepatic joiners? What are the causes? Okay, so see, the classification of the joiners can be prehepatic, hepatic, and posthepatic. And if you will see, what are the causes of prehepatic? Like hemolysis, hemolytic joiners more and more RBCs are broken down and these are the common causes of hemolysis of course like our discussion is not like discussing these things like simply the more and more RBCs are broken down and more and more globin is released and more and more heme is released and more and more heme is taken to the liver for conjugation but the liver has some capacity to conjugate or the, all that bilirubin which liver cannot hold, cannot conjugate, will, will result into indirect or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Indirect or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So that's the reason in hemolytic disorders, what happens that there will be joiners, there will be yellowish discoloration of the skin. But the urine as well as the stool colors will be normal. And that's what we ask on the in the history from the patient. What is the like the joiners is there? What is the color of the urine and what is the color of the stools? If they are normal, it means that the joiners is prehepatic. Okay. Now, uh, by the way, um, yes, you know, like from uh, USMLE point of view. Um, okay, of course, like these things we are going to discuss in uh, labs. Okay, in lab diagnosis. Of course, like we ask for the total bilirubin level, we ask for the level of unconjugated bilirubin, we ask for the levels of conjugated bilirubin, uh, and when we get the labs results, of course, we see either the indirect is the raised or the one the direct is raised, okay, and then we do the other investigations as well. So, from step point of view, you are going to read some syndromes, guys. Uh, uh, four syndromes are very, very commonly asked, you know. One is called as Gilbert syndrome, which is very common and important. Then there is something called as um, krigler Najjar syndrome. Uh, maybe you will found, maybe like they are written over here. Uh, let me check if they, they are not, like I am going to give you the names of those. Oh, yes, so, so this one, like a krigler Najjar syndrome, then there is Rotor-Johnson syndrome, and then there is... Um, Dublin Johnson syndrome. So, Rotor syndrome, uh, Gilbert syndrome, Krigler Najjar syndrome, and Dublin Johnson syndrome. So, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to discuss these as well. Okay, like it, it just pop in my mind because uh, we were like going through this one. So, like uh, you know, like uh, Gilbert syndrome is a common is common and it co and causes you can say uh, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Why? Uh, because uh, in Gilbert syndrome. Uh, the serum liver enzyme concentrations are normal uh, but uh, whenever like there is any stress in the body like fasting or like some infection uh, they cannot conjugate okay uh, all the bilirubin they are getting so there there could be a small time when when the patient they have uh, they, they, they they present with joiners okay so the next one is hepatocellular or hepatic joiners. Of course, uh, hepatocellular uh, joiners, you know, uh, one thing, remember guys, um, 
like take this as a concept like uh, the liver cells or the hepatic cells are those who are making doing basically conjugation but what happens is um, whenever this condition like hepatitis or inflammation of the liver um, the cells or the, the, the liver cells get inflamed when they get inflamed they get leaky and when, when they get leaky all the things which they are holding basically spill away in the blood so what are the things which basically spill away in the blood number one the liver enzymes ALT, AST they will be spill away in the blood um, the conjugation conjugated bilirubin which is still in the liver cells right now they are going to spill up in the blood as well as well as now the liver cells cannot perform their duty so the unconjugated bilirubins level will be raised as well so take it as a concept and remember that in hepatocellular diseases that causes hyperbilirubinemia and in that type the both direct or indirect or you can say conjugated and unconjugated they will be raised so when conjugated as well as unconjugated will be raised so remember in this case the urine will be darker in color because the conjugated is raised as well so the urine will be darker but the stools will be normal in color okay the 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 urine will be darker but the stools will be normal in color what happened, what happened in the prehepatic? In prehepatic, the, 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 the stools as well as the urine, they are normal in color. In hepatic, the, the, the urine is darker in color, but the stools, they are still normal in color. Okay. So, the cause of hepatic, hepatocellular or hepatic causes are viral hepatitis, liver cirrhosis, toxic hepatitis, like all the hepatitis which is causing liver damage. And... Again, liver cells suffer injury, lower ability to process, like the conjugation, and the normal cells still keep on converting unconjugated to conjugated one, and in the serum, of course, both conjugated as well as unconjugated are going to increase. Okay. So, uh, again, the same things, you know, the skin and mucus appear light to the dark yellow, and uh, there could be pruritus because of liver disease, and there could be anorexia even hemorrhage and the labs of course like there will be increased ALT and AST because these are the liver enzymes which we are which are going to spill away in the blood okay post hepatic jointers now uh, when we talk about the post hepatic jointers guys uh, remember it could be any blockage in the bile flow or one of the cause of post hepatic jointers is biliary obstruction simply so when there is biliary obstruction you can see over here the conjugated bilirubin in the bile of course the conjugation is done by the liver it is already done so the conjugated bilirubin in the bile does not reach the intestines because now what is there there is post hepatic obstruction that's what is also called as obstructive jointers okay in these patients what is simply there there is obstruction the conjugation is done there is no there is no issue with conjugation but what is the issue now that the conjugated bilirubin because of the blockage in the bile duct or in the biliary tract cannot reach the intestines and that's the reason it is also called as obstructive jaundice right so what will happen in these patients guys because the bilirubin cannot reach the um, intestines so the stools are pale Understand? So this is the first time when we see the change in the stools. The stools, the stools will be pale. Okay. 
So see, very, very, very important thing. The stools in this case will be pale. And that's why we always ask for the color of the stools, color of the urine. But the conjugated bilirubin is soluble and filtered by the kidney. So the urine will be dark colored or dark brown, cola colored maybe. And because of this obstruction, what happens like all this bile salts, they are going to spill away in the blood and they will cause, cause pruritus. Because the bile salts are not going are now going to deposit into in the skin. So one of the cause of what you can say this post hepatic jointness or obstructive jointness is you know the uh, what you can say the gallstones. Okay. So that's the reason that you know we are going to like cover all the things. So see the intrahepatic causes could be hepatitis, could be cirrhosis, could be drugs, okay and rest like there could be parasites or biliary structure or neoplasms or all the things you know simply uh, bile tract is obstructed and the same story which I told you okay so <coughs> uh, I hope you understand uh, see this is the difference between hemolytic hepatocellular or cholestasis or simply pre post sorry pre hepatic and post hepatic pre hepatic post uh, hepatic and post hepatic or you can say hemolytic hepatocellular or obstructive okay so the same thing see what what i told you about the urine color and about the stool color if you know this thing you can simply say okay either the total bilirubin will be raised which type of them that will be raised what will happen so see like clinically when we take the history we can on the history guys we can reach the point we can reach either uh, we have to take uh, we have to think about obstructive hepatic or post hepatic so always ask these questions okay abdominal pain will suggest biliary tract obstruction if the joint us is painless in elderly people think about cancers which are blocking the bile flow okay so uh, that's that's an important thing uh, now uh, when it comes to the uh, sorry wait okay uh, the next thing which we can cover now is yes, I, I what I told you I will talk about the syndromes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so guys, what is uh, what is uh, Gilbert syndrome? Gilbert syndrome is a very mild type of liver disorder, as I told you. That what happens in these patients is basically uh, they have a mutation and they have simply decreased activity of the enzyme glucuronyl transferase. So normally these people are completely fine. They don't have any issue like I'm talking about Gilbert syndrome but sometimes when they are under stress when they are having some infection when they are fasting you know they develop jointness because they are they have like a little decreased activity of the enzyme okay so uh, now uh, remember like when they cannot conjugate the thing properly so this is the syndrome of unconjugated uh, unconjugated bilirubinemia, right? Unconjugated bilirubinemia will be raised, right, in, the, in these patients. So Gilbert syndrome is there. Um, then come uh, comes like here the this is not Dubin. Uh, yes, this is Dubin. Dubin Johnson syndrome. Yes. So uh, in Dubin Johnson syndrome, what is there? Um, again, it's a genetic condition. It is autosomal recessive type of condition. Okay, and uh, this condition again doesn't cause uh, much problem with the patients but and what is there basically um, these are the patient when they have uh, uh, like uh, uh, they can do the conjugation okay because they don't have the, any trouble with the enzyme but once they have done the conjugation 
So the conjugated bilirubin, uh, what you can say, uh, which is uh, in the liver cell, uh, basically they cannot uh, uh, put it out, right? So they cannot transport the conjugated bilirubin, uh, which is already done in the liver cell, they cannot um, uh, transport it out of the cell, okay? So what happens like, uh, um, their liver will be will become full of conjugated, uh, what you can say, hyperbilirubinemia, right? So, uh, when, for example, you know, when we do biopsy of these patients, what we found, like their liver is black in color. Why? Uh, uh, there is because there is of dep deposition of the uh, more and more bilirubin over there, right? So, uh, that thing is important, okay? So, the conjugated hyperbilirubinemia uh, in these patients is, is, is a result of uh, the defect in the transfer of uh, of the bilirubin from the liver cells to the bile, right? So uh, what happens in this one? They have conjugated bilirubinemia or hyperbilirubinemia, right? And uh, then comes the Krigler-Najjar syndrome. So in Krigler-Najjar syndrome, okay, sorry, the spelling of this one is not correct. This is Krigler-Najjar um, syndrome, okay? So Krigler-Najjar syndrome. <laughs> okay, uh, now what is Krigler Najjar syndrome is basically uh, uh, they like uh, they have uh, abnormality again a mutation in the gene uh, which basically make the enzyme glucuronyl transferase. Okay, so what happens in these pa pa patients like uh, uh, like uh, Krigler Najjar syndrome patients? Uh, what happens is. Uh, that uh, uh, they have higher level of unconjugated bilirubin in their blood okay and uh, because they don't have that enzyme okay like in, in gilbert syndrome uh, i i remember like in this way that c and g you know they 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 are they look like same right so but g have something extra than c so c have missed enzyme okay the enzy enzyme is not there so that's why what happens is uh, when they don't have enzyme they cannot conjugate and when they cannot conjugate so what kind of bilirubin will be increased unconjugated um, bilirubinemia will be there but now they cannot conjugate at all so this unconjugated will be will be collected in the blood will go and get deposited in the brain and will it will cause death in most of them like in very early uh, like maybe within first few days of life okay so they cannot conjugate at all and they die okay so g have like, something extra right so so like g have the enzyme though like the enzyme is not like normal so they can conjugate a lot and that's why they are, they are normal people so this is like Krigler Najjar syndrome it have two types but like uh, we are not going to go in detail of that okay and the last one which we are going to discuss is called as rotor syndrome so so rotor syndrome um, again, like rotor syndrome is quite rare, and uh, uh, this one is uh, again conjugated bilirubinemia. Okay, so remember, like two are unconjugated, both start from C and G, and two are conjugated. Okay, so um, now uh, these are again the patients like who have conjugated uh, hyperbilirubinemia, right? So, and like they are well, what you can say. Uh, both of them they cause conjugated hyperbilirubinemia okay uh, like either it's rotor or either either it's uh, what you can say um, dublin johnson right so <laughs> but like uh, when when you are seeing a patient of dublin johnson their liver is black and when you will check, will check a patient of rotor syndrome their liver is normal okay so uh, uh, like this this is the important thing you can say uh, of the of these two <laughs> the difference between these two so, uh, like these are the four syndromes which are which are related with um, the defects of bilirubin. Okay. So, other than that, uh, yes, uh, the important thing like we can we should discuss. Uh, so, see Gilbert syndrome. The enzyme is there, but a little less activity, or not? It's not lack. It's like decreased activity, right? And uh, uh, Dublin Johnson is. Uh, the conjugation will be done but it cannot be transported into the 
by okay and Franklin Najar uh, I told you that completely absent so unconjugated bilirubin will be in the blood and Dublin Jones right road rotor is almost same so decrease unconjugated bilirubin uptake by the liver cells so defective secretion of conjugated bilirubin from liver cells it is so more like a Dublin Johnson syndrome okay so uh, again like this test we are going to talk about in uh, labs rather I will teach you now uh, how we can take the history of uh, 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 us right in the patients okay who have joined us so what are the important history points we have to cover okay so like much of the things of course I already teach you I already told you what are the things you will look for and uh, how they make difference and how they will help you uh, uh, to diagnose the things right, right? Uh, clinically of course so uh, whenever of course like we we uh, take the history of joint us like whenever we found the uh, patient of joint us okay so in the history uh, of course first of all we inquire you know like when the onset how much duration is there how much progress is progression like how's the progression <laughs> for example if the patient is saying that you know he usually get this kind of thing okay on and off whenever he fast or whenever he have infection so think about um, Gilbert syndrome okay. makes sense so um, other things of course uh, uh, we know what are the causes the prehepatic hepatic as well as post hepatic right and we know the symptoms so now see uh, always ask about the appetite changes okay and now why, why appetite change I'm talking about because the most common cause is hepatitis viral hepatitis in that one the appetites is changed always ask about the weight loss always ask about the GIT bleeding why because hepatitis C is one of the cause right always ask about pruritus in post hepatic you know this will be there always ask about the uh, color of uh, stool and urine okay uh, drugs can damage liver can lead to joint us alcohol can damage liver can lead to the apparatus uh, any surgeries recently uh, related to liver can cause some strictures or post hepatic type of joint us any blood transfusions um, can lead to uh, Hepatitis B, C, okay. Any sexual contact, very, very, very important uh, in the patients. Okay, and uh, um, other than that, uh, um, travel history for hepatitis A, okay. Tattooing. Uh, uh, tattooing you know again for hepatitis B and C so oh see like a lot of history points you know like why I'm talking about this history simply because I am talking about what you can say uh, looking for what what is the cause of the liver damage right so that's why like I'm talking about that and whenever like uh, um, we go for the examination uh, we what you can say we go for um, we, we look for these points um, in examination what what are the points you, you 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 must be looking for is a physical examination or examination examination points now uh, again general appearance is important it will tell you a lot of things if the patient look like like Cachectic or decreased uh, BMI, you know, think about cancers, check the vitals, of course, very important. And then do the GPE, then go for the systemic examination, okay, depending on what system is involved, you are thinking about. Of course, like different scenarios arise when we are doing this thing. So we always check for chronic liver disease now again you don't have enough knowledge but like we can let's check for finger clubbing palmar erythema leukonychia spider nevi gynecomastia 
and flapping tremors, fetal hepaticus, confusion. We can check for paler, for example, in, no, this thing maybe you will understand. So in GP, for example, if there is paler, so what it means, like maybe that patient have hemolytic jointers, right? Check the BMI of the patient. Check for any hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, any needle marks on the arms. For example, the patient is a uh, drug abuser. So, of course, like they, they use injections to inject and they, they are higher chances of getting hepatitis B and C. Uh, if there, there is pruritus, so maybe you will found scratch marks on the body. Uh, the patient is scratching all the time um, as well as... Uh, uh, Okay, very, very, very important thing, you know. Uh, one of the thing is urine dipstick, you know, uh, which can be done in the office. And if you want to understand what is that like uh, in like open internal medicine, nephrology lectures, and you will found a video saying urine dipstick. It's office test, like we can take the urine and we can uh, dip a stick in that. It can tell, guide us about many things, like uh, either there's any infection, glucose, ketones, and many other things. So one of the thing it can check is like uh, either there is uh, uh, bilirubin is there or not, right? So uh, simply it can it can uh, tell us or what you can say. If the urine is dark, of course, think about hepatic or post-hepatic jaundice, right? So... Um, I think that's pretty much about uh, what you can say about jaundice, which we have discussed already. And of course, like the rest of the things we are going to discuss um, in uh, lab diagnostics, right? So thank you so much, guys, for listening to this lecture. I will see you around.